Namaste. Welcome. It is a joy to be with you today on this beautiful Sunday. Wherever you are, I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. And I thank you for coming with us today to share in the Sangha, to share in our meditative energies, to share in the blessings of communal meditation and reflection. Let us begin with a short meditation. Focus your attention at the sun center. Closing your eyes. Turning your head to the left with a double exhalation. <sighs> Bring your head back to the center and begin to watch your breath. Take three long, deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Letting go of all the angular energy. And now rest quietly, focusing your attention at the sun center, the point between your eyes. Oh, great spirit, saints and sages of all times, of all places, oh, ye path makers of old, beloved gurus of the holy Kriya lineage, most beloved Lord of life in all of thy names, all of thy forms, all of thy incarnations, all of thy projections forth. Namaste. Sweep clear our paths. Sweep clear our paths. Sweep clear our paths. May our communication be clear today at this moment and always. May it be easy, may it be harmoniously, harmonious. May each soul participating in this meditation have that which they need most. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Om Shanti, 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 Om. Om. Namaste. Eons and eons and eons ago, before you incarnated onto this plane, on the planet Mother Earth, on the planet Gaia, there was a family, a royal family, if you will, the Raj, the King Raj, if you wish, although that just means King King, was married to a woman whom he loved very much. And they had twin, twin children, a boy and a girl. They were Geminis. In the way of Geminis, he thought one thing, she 
thought the other thing. She thought this, he thought that. They were close, they were twins, but always, always, always their views separated. So mama and papa decide one day, you know, it's a problem. Together, these two will rule our kingdom. We need to teach them to come together as one. Not here, not here, not here. As one, balanced. So they call them into the room. And mama says, we're going to take you for a little experiment. They were Kriya yogis. They like to do things. They like to have the experience of primary experience. They wanted their children to have a primary experience. So they said, we'd like you to invite some of your friends over. In fact, um, we need, let's see, two, four, six, six of your friends plus the two of you. So their six friends come and the mother and father say, well, we're going to give you a uh, little experiment here. We want you to participate in this. But to do this, we have to blindfold you. You have to be blindfolded. And then you will be escorted to a very special place. So they get blindfolded. And each soul has a companion who can see. They take them out to this great arena, if you will. And there are seats that the king and queen can sit in that are above the arena. The whole group stands around. Now, the twins, one at the head, one at the tail. And they have, each of them has three of their friends on each side standing. they hear this ponderous, ponderous sound. And one of the courtiers says, please move apart just a little bit. So they do. Sound stops. Now the king says, to those who can see, escort the blind ones up to, well, up to, escort them so they can feel. So each of them walks up. The one twin girl at the head. She puts her hands out. The twin boy at the tail, he puts his hands out to touch the thing. And each of their friends, they're touching, they're grabbing. Rough, hairy. Feeling, they all feel the same rough hairiness. Then the king says, this is the great elephant, the elephant that never forgets, the elephant that has in its memory everything that it has ever done, everything you have ever done, everything that has ever been done in the world resides in the memory of this being. I want you to tell me what it looks like. Tell me the shape of the bean. And the girl goes, ah, me first, Papa, me first. 
And the others kind of draw back, calling the king papa, you know? So she says, well, it's round like a tube. The elephant is round like a tube as she holds onto its trunk. And her brother says, no, no, no. The elephant is long and thin and curly. Now the boy's friends and the girl's friends, two of them say, well, no, this is a tree trunk. And then the other two join in and say, no, 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 this is as big as a tree trunk. The elephant is a tree trunk, huge tree trunk. And the other two friends say, no, what are you talking about? It's a hide. It's a straight hanging. It's just a flat hanging. And chattering this way and chattering that way and chattering the other way. They all insist on what the elephant looks like. All right. Enough, 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 says the king. Please escort all of them up the stairs. All of them up here where the queen and I will wait for them. So all the people go up. The elephant stands in front of the king and in its royal way, nods its head and bows and sits and waits. And all of the beings get up by the king. The courtiers take their blindfolds off. What do they see? Oh, why that tube is a trunk. Why that hairy little small thing on the back? Why that's the tail. Oh, I see these tree trunks. They are the legs. Oh, this flat hanging. Why that's the side of the body of the elephant. But here all this time we were arguing, all this time we were fighting, all this time we were angry with each other. And it's all a part of the whole. We were all right. We were all right. How do you like them and we were all right. The king gave them his blessing and the queen gave them her blessing. And they sat down to listen. And he said, this is you. This is you. Some of you look at me and you see king. Some of you look at me and you see husband. Some of you look at me and you see papa. Some of you look at me and you see ruler. Some of you look at me and you are happy. Some of you look at me and you are fearful. Some of you look at me indifferently. And some of you look at me with distaste. Why? Why is this? Who is this being you are looking at? I am all of those things, and I am none of those things. And like the king, you are many, 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 many things. And the twin boy turns to his sister and says, well, sis, I guess you were right. And she says, well, I guess you were right too. Now, what about you? What about you? Who are you? Well, I'd like you to take just a minute and count, use your fingers and count how many names people have called you in the course of your life. How many names? Let's take a minute. Now, if you're like me, 
I can count 12 without thinking very hard. Yeah, no, 12, what do you mean 12? Well, you know, my Swami name, Swami Choti Prananda. Yeah, people can say Swamiji, they can say Swami Choti, they can say Choti. They can say Jyoti Prananda. They can say Swami Jyoti Prananda. They can say Swami Prananda. They can say SJP. You know, that's seven. That's without counting my English names. That's without counting the names endearingly and otherwise that my mother and father called me, my siblings called me, and is without counting the names <laughs> that people who may not like this personality may have called me. It's only the names that I can think of and am aware of at this time. And with each name, we have Nama Rupa, name and form. And so if I look at you and I say, oh, I see. There's the little yogi. Oh, I see. There's the Swamiji. Oh, I see. There she is as mom. There she is as Victoria. There she is as my yoga teacher. There she is as the yoga teacher. There she is as the student. Each of these names create or have a form to them. Each of these names has a filter to them. And as you believe that you are these things, as you believe that you are Swami, a seeker, a daughter, a mother, a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a daughter, a friend. As you believe and label yourself as any of these things, there is a filter that is put up, a, a filter that is put up in your consciousness that limits your horizon of awareness, limits, limits your horizon of awareness. Those filters are put up depending upon where you are, who you are with, who the people are that you are with. They are put up depending upon the time of your life, the place of your life. Years ago, I used to do a, a little experiment. This was um, in the very early years of uh, my marriage. And uh, we would go back to my in-laws, my mother and father-in-law's house. And my brother-in-law often would come with us for a while he was living there. And I remember as clear as day, the first time this happened. We weren't in the house five minutes. And my husband's behavior changed. And his brother's behavior changed. Now, we're very close to my husband's brother, and I was seeing him every Sunday for 10 years. This was in the early, early, early years. And they would begin to act like boys. I know, my mother-in-law would have their favorite foods there, and they'd start scarfing down food that they would never eat otherwise. And they'd start laughing and telling jokes and acting very, very differently. They wouldn't help take the dishes off the table. They wouldn't do the dishes until you ask them. Now, outside of that house, both of those people would always help without ever being asked. But they used to just go there and they'd sit and they'd tell jokes. They'd laugh. They'd talk to their dad. They'd laugh. What happened? Well, Jim became Jimmy and Mark became Marky. They were no longer the adult souls that they had been. They walked out of that house and everything changed again. Their horizon of awareness expanded. After a few times, I started to mention this to both of them. I said, you know, hey, I mean, I, it's wonderful that you're happy when you're there, but really, you know, could you help with the dishes? <laughs> could you help your mom and me while we're there? Oh. Well, of course, didn't even know 
that their behavior had changed. Now here's really the, the mystical part of that. They were very close. They remain close. But that closeness took a different tonus, a different filter when they were in the place that they grew up in. For them, that place had a special meaning. Subconsciously, unconsciously, it had a special meaning. Their relationship to each other, to their parents, had a different meaning. And when their father and mother were no longer upon the earth and the house was sold, it all dissolved away. And as soon as mom and pop, as soon as mom and dad died, as soon as they died from the earth, they left their bodies on the earth, that energy changed. As many times as we were in that house getting things ready, they never laughed the same. They never played the same. They never had the same childish joy between them as they did at that time. What happened? Where did that go? What happened to their consciousness there? The time changed, the place changed. Very mystically important. And thus they changed. Now, you will allow thoughts to arise in your mind based upon who you are with, where you are, the clothes you are wearing, the things you surround yourself with. All of these give you a sense of who and what you are. But that shifts. That shifts every day, multiple times during the day. You get in the car, you're the driver. You get on your bicycle, you're the rider. You get on the bus or the L or the train, you are the passenger. Now, all those words have different vibrations to them, different tonuses to them, different horizons of awareness to them. If I'm the driver, I'm in charge of where I'm going. If I'm the rider, there's the implication that the bicycle is giving the direction. And if I'm the passenger, I can only go where that train is going. I can get off, get on, but I have no control over where it's going. Now, some of the roles and functions in your life are like this. People look at you and they say, oh, I see, there's a tunnel. Oh, I see, there's the mom. Oh, I see, there's a teacher. Oh, I see, there's the lover. Oh, I see, there's the dad. Oh, I see, there's the boss. Oh, I see, there's the worker. Oh, I see, there's my friend. There's the musician. We name things. And when we name them, we give them form. And we are confined you are confined by the form that you think you are. You know, what happens when you walk down the street one day and you glance up at the window and you see someone with silver hair or platinum hair and you think, well, who is that? I have dark hair. No, no, no. You realize that was in the past. That was a long time ago. Now, every time you come to a time gate in your life, every time something changes in your life, it requires an adjustment. The woman who said to me, and to me, this is a great, great, great blessing that she said this to me. And I, I share it with you to really share in the, um, in, in the blessing of her 
struggles so that will ease for her. Three, four, five, six times she said, my job is over, my job is over. I don't know what I'm gonna do now, my job is over. Finally, I said, I, I'm not sure what you mean, your job is over. Well, you know, my oldest child has gone in the military. My youngest child is graduating from college. I am not a mom anymore. Well, wait a minute. I thought you were an artist. I, I thought you were an artist. And I thought this mom, you were taking a break. But you've been painting all along. You've been studying art. You've been drawing and painting since you were a little girl. You went to school. You've got a studio in back. You're, you've got all kinds of art supplies filling your house. And even when you were being a mom every day, you were sketching, you were drawing, you were painting. Somehow you were creating. What does it mean to have a job? And, and she sat back and said, oh, Well, yes, I'm still an artist. Well, yes, that is, that is my vocation. Oh, you're still their mother, but, but, but you have come to a different time. They will come to you for different things. They are off dreaming their dream and living their lives. And you can nurture them in a different way now. And you have to nurture yourself. One of the greatest uh, causes of disruption in marriages and in relationships between people who have children is their children reaching an age where they are no longer in the home. Because if you believe that the thing that you are is just a mother or just a father or just the provider for your family, the entire structure of your life falls apart when the role is no longer the same. What about the man who retires after working for so many years or the woman who retires after working for so many years? And they have plenty of money, they've saved money, that's not the issue. But what happens, the ego says, oh, you know, I don't have all these people around me that I did for all these years. What does that mean? Why? How does it affect me? How does it affect your ego? So mystically, our goal is to expand our horizon of awareness. Your goal, my goal, through meditation, through our life experiences, is to really come to understand and know life to know what life is, what your life is, what your life is about. That's the goal here. And then to learn from all of your life experiences. And so some of you have had some life experiences that you've created. We all create them when we come in. Some of us, <laughs> all of us, I guess I would say, have experiences that have been very, very challenging at times. Whether it's illness of a loved one, whether it's trying to figure out how the prana of the earth works, the money of the earth works, whatever it is, these are challenges that everyone has had. Health challenges, money challenges, all of these are things that you will experience during the course of your life. Gaining freedom to do what you want to with your life. Oh, that's a challenge, isn't it? When somebody else has told you how to live your life and now you have to take responsibility for how to live your life and what to do. When there's nobody looking over your shoulder that's going to criticize what you're doing. Oh, <laughs> you have to have some guiding principles. You have to have something that shows you 
what you should be doing. Some principles against which you will live. Now in Kriya Yoga, we, have, we say that you're trying to find the Atma, the self-existent one. Yeah, that's nice. How do you do that? What does that mean? Well, there are many ways that you do it. But you begin first with the practice of detaching yourself from that identity of who and what you think you are. That's important. You have to detach yourself from who and what you think you are. And you do this first by changing the language that you use, the language that you think. And so rather than saying, I'm sick, I have a toothache, I have a toe ache, I have a fingernail ache, I have a hair ache, I have a headache, whatever that is. You say, ah, the body might be having a little bit of a rough day. The body might be having a toe ache. The body might be having a toenail ache. The body might be having a headache. The body might be having a hair ache. The throat might be having a throat ache. But use the or this, not I, not I. Every time you say I, you are feeding that ego and you are focusing your attention on a particular part of your being, not the whole. And you want to focus your attention, my beloved, on the whole, on the whole, on the whole. You want to raise like the king did, like he caused his children to go up, to ascend up, not to stay at the same place and turn inward, but to ascend up, to see the whole to see what you are part of, what you are a part of. And this will change your actions. It will change your awarenesses. It will change your ability to handle all the situations that come into your life. Young man, is invited to go to be with his family buys an airplane ticket oh he says to me i don't know i don't know if i should go i don't know if they really want me i don't know if my mom wants me i don't know if my dad wants me i don't know if i should go or not You bought the ticket. Get on the plane. Go. They invited you. You bought the ticket. Get on the plane. Go. And stop vacillating. Stop vacillating. Now, each of us has this vacillation, this Geminian trait, vacillating from this to this to this to this to this to this. To this faster than I can move my hand, your mind vacillates. Stop, as my guru would say, stop the teeter-totter. Become steady and do thou one thing. If you have to name yourself, you know, be like Shelly G. And think of yourself as the self-existent one. How would you live if you really knew you were immortal? How would you live if you really recognize that all of these names, all of these forms that you have picked up and become so attached to? Our masks in the play of Maya masks in the play of life. Maya, the illusion of life. Maya, the not being able to, ah, I shouldn't say that, no. Maya, the play of life, the 
play of life. Maya being able to see the play of life, being able to know the play of life, being able to find awareness of the true nature of life. This is what you have. This is what you are. Let us turn inward for a moment. Focus your attention first upon the light on the altar, the Jyoti light, just the flame. That light that shows you who and what you are. That is the light that is within you. It is a symbol of that which you are eternally. That light can light up the darkness of a room. Now closing your eyes, focus your attention at the sun center. Again, the point between your eyes. And draw the energy from the limbs of your body using the sipping breath. Draw the energy from the trunk of your body into the spinal column, again, using the sipping breath. From the base of the spine, draw the energy up to the sun center. Now move that energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you. Sweep around to the left, behind you, to the right, in front of you. Encase your entire being in a golden ball of light. Expand that golden light. And now comfortably held within this light, ascend upward beyond the room you are in. Ascend as high as you are able, above the continent, above the planet. Ascend upward into the highest, highest realms. Om. Ascend with no difficulty, ease in your ascension, ease and ascend upward. Om Namo Namo. Ascend until you reach the high place. Om. Ascending, you find yourself in the great hall of meditators. The great realm of meditators. The enormous, massive realm of meditators. The 
this realm, in the center of this realm, is a three-dimensional mirror. Begin to walk towards the mirror. And as you do, you will see one aspect of yourself. But at your sun center, as you look in the mirror, see the light, the flame of Kriya, bright shining within you. Walking around the mirror in the center, you come to another spot. Again, see yourself in a different aspect of your person. Always seeing first the flame that you are. Continue your procession around the crystalline mirror, turning to look, seeing first the light. As you walk around the circle, you may notice that sometimes the light seems dimmer to you. And other times it is very bright. Now, as you reach the nine o'clock on the circle, again, look at this mirror. Feel all of the mirrors, the 12 pieces coming together. See them dissolving away. And a colorless flame arises in the place of the mirror. A brilliant light, a brilliant flame of light arises in front of you. And see that all of the light that has been within you becomes one with the flame. Becomes one with the light. As this jyoti begins to grow and expand in this hall of meditation, Step towards the light, step into the light, become one with the light. See that thou art the light.
all of the mirrors dissolve away. All of the walls dissolve away. There is only the light. The light emanates forth the sound. Oh. Thou art the light, thou art the sound. Thou art the light divine. Focus completely on the light. Thou art the light. All else is mirrors. All else is veils. You are life. You are the goodness of life. You are the light of life. The light of life lives within the shell of your human body. The light of light lives within every cell of your being. It is alive within you. The light of life is within all manifest reality, within the ant, within the bee, within the bird, within your toenail, within your hair. within the book that sits upon the table, within the tree and the peach and the leaves projecting forth. Within the worms upon the earth, the light divine lives within the oldest form of life living at the bottom of the oceans. The light of life exists. Thou art that.
All the powers that be pour forth their blessings upon thee at this moment. That the veils of illusion be removed. That thou might see the Maya, the ebb and flow of life. And in that scene that thou might know, that thou might remember who and who thou art, who and what thou art. Know that you are the goodness of life. Know that you are life. Thou art good. And from goodness, only goodness can come. Whatever you have done, whatever you have said, whatever you have thought that you don't like, that you feel ashamed of, you feel embarrassed of, you feel chagrined about, let it go. It was just a bump in the road. You did the best you could. You skinned your knee. It's all right. Stand up and walk forward. Find health and happiness and vibrancy and vitality. Find joy in every day of your being. Meditate, meditate. Meditate. Lift up thy countenance to the light and be thou blessed. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Tat Sat Om, thou art that, Aham Brahmasmi, thou art the creator of thy life. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for the blessings of your presence. Thank you for the joy, the yoga city that you've shared, the meditative energy that you've shared. Be happy, be happy, be happy. Namaste.